Good morning, everyone. Give me just a second here. We have a few minutes started. Um, so I'm Sean Rogers. Uh, hopefully a few of you out there know me. Uh, for those that have sat through one of my webinars before, for whatever reason, I uh, my PowerPoint can really bog down when I'm doing the recordings of these webinars. So if there's an uncomfortably long pause between slides, that's why I'm waiting for the PowerPoint display on my screen to actually update to show me the next slide. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Today's presentation is going to be on our Nebula Cloud Managed Network platforms. Um, it's a solution we've put together. It's particularly aimed at bars with a lot of uh, customers to want to manage to simplify things. Um, it was built originally for MSPs, and so we'll talk a little bit about what an MSP is, and if you're a VAR, why you may want to think about getting into MSPs. Um, and then from then on, we'll, we'll start talking about the product. Um, so if you have any questions, submit those, not via chat, not by raising your hand. Submit any questions as we go along through the Q&A box. Um, for the most part, I will answer these at the end of the presentation, but I'll try to keep an eye on those as those come in, and if something uh, really good comes through, I'll try to answer it. Um, but without further ado, we'll go ahead and get started. So we confirm the recording's working. Looks like it is. Okay. So for today's presentation, everybody who attends is going to be getting themselves an Amazon gift card. Maybe. Again, sorry. There we go. Like I said, really long legs sometimes I'm trying to advance my slides. Um, and then everyone's getting put into a contest that will be held, um, and somebody is going to win a $1,000 Amazon gift card. Um, we do these as a pool. It's done twice a year. Um, and then if you join our partner program or you're already one of our partners and you haven't already taken advantage of this, you can get your hands on an Amazon, or excuse me, as a, on a Nebula demo kit which includes an access point, a POE switch, and a security gateway. So you can test out and play with Nebula yourself in-house um, to get a feel for it. Now we're going to go through just a quick little brief bit of background for anyone that's uh, joining this presentation through advertising we've done on social media or through Spiceworks, who isn't too familiar with Zycel and who we are. Um, so we've been making computer networking products. Um, I guess technically it's actually 30 years now. We started in 1989, so this will be our 30th year. Uh, making computer networking equipment. Um, you may remember us from back in the day with dial-up ISPs and dial-up bulletin boards. Um, we were one of the first ones with the data fax voice modems, uh, some of the first ones out there with 14.4 modems. From there, we moved on to uh, ISDN products, cable modems, DSL modems, DSL head-end equipment, um, and of course, small office and consumer networking equipment. Um, so we've got a little over 1,500 employees. We have over 100 million devices that are out there in the field. So Zycel, we internally break up our products into three different categories. Um, products that are aimed at the telco and service provider market. So that's, that's your uh, DSL, CPE type stuff, uh, fiber stuff, MSANs, DSLANs, things like that. We have our business products, which is probably what most of you guys are interested in. So network security products, firewalls, unified threat management, um, SD-WAN, switch products, business wireless, cloud networking, which is what today's presentation is going to focus on, business CPE products. Um, and then we've got our consumer products. Um, we don't offer as many of these in the U.S. as we do in some of the other regions, but we do still have a, a slim lineup of uh, products that are aimed at the consumer space. So Zycel itself, um, something that makes us different than, say, uh, Netgear or uh, Linksys or something like that, is we have pretty significant in-house R&D and engineering resources available to us. Um, our headquarters is in Taiwan, which is where our main R&D center is. But we do also have an R&D facility in Santa Clara, California, and another one in Germany, um, both of those focusing on specific product lines. So in-house, we've got about 500 software and hardware engineers, and we have over 150 people globally in tech support. Um, that might actually be low, because I think here, just in the U.S. alone, between our two different tech support groups, I think we've got about 40 people just here in North America. So when you do call in, yes, you do talk to somebody here at our Anaheim location. Um, during day, normal hours, um, it's all handled in-house. Um, we've started offering some outsourced support in the evening. 
um, and everything during the day is somebody who's an actual Zyso employee located here in our offices. So anyway, when we look at our uh, business solutions, um, this is our sort of lineup. We sort of already touched on this, you know, security appliances, switches, wireless LAN, hospitality gateway products, and then various different uh, ways of doing network management through both software and cloud-based solutions. So now we'll just talk briefly, what is an MSP? This is probably the biggest trend that we've been seeing over the last few years when it comes to the computer networking space. More and more people are moving away from your traditional VAR type of service and moving to, to become a managed service provider. So basically, managed service providers are pretty much doing the same thing VARs have already always done, helping build the networks, configure the networks, deploy the networks and computers and things like that for their customers but doing it under a subscription model where you get a certain amount of revenue that's guaranteed from month to month. You essentially sign a, uh, a services plan with your customer and they pay you on usually a monthly, sometimes a quarterly basis. And generally those contracts are good for somewhere between three and five years. So that way you've got a consistent and predictable cash flow. Um, generally it's increased revenue because while you might not be getting necessarily paid up front for the hardware, over the term of that contract, you will get more money than you would have before. Um, and some of the surveys that have done have found that end users, when they're dealing with somebody who's acting as an MSP, they're much more loyal to that customer. They're much more likely to recommend them to other people. So one of the other big things that goes big with being an MSP, which makes them different from a VAR, is instead of waiting for something to break and then charging to fix it, you're doing a lot more proactive type monitoring monitoring their networks, you're making sure all their service patches are applied on their servers, you're keeping their desktop software up to date. So that's, you know, something that's a little bit different from VARs. And when you start doing that, you need to do a little bit more um, as far as how you manage those customers. Um, so we've actually got another webinar coming up. It's going to be February 28th, I believe. Um, I'm not sure if we finalized that date, but I know that we're shooting for February 28th, um, where we've got a webinar with Carl Pauchuk, who has written a number of different books on MSPs, becoming an MSP, how to transition from VAR to MSP. So we'll be doing another webinar just with him. So if that sounds like something, if you're not an MSP and you're thinking about becoming one, you'd like to learn more, join that webinar on, I believe, February 28th. And we'll go more into detail on how to do that and some of the other things there. But by becoming an MSP, what we're seeing is also a bigger push into the cloud. Um, and so that's why we've, we've created and invented our Nebula platform here for you. So here's just some of the stats of some of what's been going on. Um, we probably need to update these slides now that we're in 2019. Uh, but what we see here is cloud managed wireless LAN infrastructure grew by 38%. Um, there's, in 2017, cloud-based infrastructure and platform clouds were worth about $32 billion. Um, and 60% of enterprises were planned to have their, at least some of their infrastructure on cloud platforms by the end of 2018. A big thing that drives end users for adopting the uh, cloud-based solutions is actually surprisingly it's security. The idea that you have the networking vendor themselves, us, you know, keeping that cloud platform up to date and making it easy for an MSP or for a VAR to push out and stay on top of security patches are big reasons for moving to the cloud. So I'll talk about a little bit some of the other stuff that goes into the cloud and why people want to get into cloud managed networking. Key takeaways on this are lower combined running costs, lower workload for you, allowing you to work smarter and faster, the ability to be able to touch your customers' networks and fix problems with them or make changes as requested anywhere you are. You don't have to be on site. You don't have to be in your offices. Built-in scalability and redundancy. You're no longer in the situation where your controller maxes out. You've got to swap out one controller for a different controller. And as we talked about before, security. So I wanna go through this slide briefly. It's just showing all of the stuff that goes into purchasing and deploying a network for your customer. Everything from purchasing the hardware, setting up remote access, setting up a monitoring platform, storing logs, user management, all of those things. So when we go and look at the cloud, what the cloud does is that helps reduce a lot of that for us. 
So installation of equipment with the cloud-based networking products, especially ours, um, it's pretty much plug and play. You don't have to do any local configuration in 90% of networks. You simply plug them in, give them power, give them DHCP and internet access, and everything else is done automatically from our updates, configuration, everything like that. You don't need different pieces of hardware located on site to do the monitoring, cloud-based networking equipment or at least the good stuff that's out there, is automatically going to dial back into the cloud. It's going to handle that traversal. It'll punch through a firewall and reach out to the cloud. So there's nothing you need to do or extra you need to install. You don't need to set up remote access. Um, so no VPNs, things like that. The cloud itself, for a lot of this, becomes the monitoring platform. So there's nothing additional you need to necessarily buy. Storage is handled in the cloud. Um, in the case of Nebula, we store a year's worth of log and user data in the cloud for you. Um, simplified setup, a big part of Nebula is focusing on the key features and functions that people need to use, simplifying that interface. I know it's been a long been a complaint of a lot of our products is uh, how complex, particularly firewall products can be. So um, a big part of cloud is, is simplifying things and making everything configurable through a simple cloud interface. Um, one of the attendees here had did send in a question asking about ATP. So ATP is our new line of firewall products and no, they are not currently cloud managed. Um, we'll get more into that. I'll talk about the cloud managed firewalls that we currently offer. Um, if you're looking for cloud management, we do have some cloud managed platforms um, available for those, but they're not part of Nebula. So at least for the moment, ATP is not part of the Nebula solution. So anyway, the, the, the main takeaway here is it's a lot easier and simpler for you. There's less to buy, there's less to configure, there's less to set up. So it makes your life a lot simpler and let you spend more time doing more important things. So now we'll start talking about Nebula. Nebula is our ground up solution that we built specifically for cloud managed networks. Um, if you're not, still not familiar with what cloud managed network is, probably the biggest name in this space is Cisco's Meraki product line. So Meraki pioneered the idea of a cloud managed wireless LAN back in the day. They got bought out by Cisco. Um, and we have become, I think, probably the one of the biggest areas of growth for Cisco is their Meraki line of products. So our Nebula solution is very similar to Meraki as far as the goals and a lot of the core functionality, if not quite the product breadth. So basically, Nebula is designed to allow you to manage multiple customers, multiple sites, and multiple pieces of hardware, in this case, access points, switches, and security gateways, all through one pane of glass. One place you go, one thing you do, um, and you're set to go. Setup can be done without unboxing. Um, the hardware and the boxes contain a QR code. So to assign a device to your cloud and your, your customer, all you need to do is scan in that QR code and assign it to your customer, and that is it. So you can assign these to your customer, you can do all the core configuration without ever having to take anything out of the box. You can just ship the hardware then to your customer and tell them to plug it in, or send out a tech on site who just needs to know where to plug stuff in and how to plug it in. Um, we've dramatically simplified, like I was talking about before, configuration. Um, basically, when you first plug in a Nebula product, it will reach out to the cloud it will see which customer it's been assigned to. It will automatically download the configurations that you've set up in the cloud previously, and it will automatically update to the latest firmware. So it's literally plug and go. Um, depending on how long the hardware has been sitting out in uh, distribution, may have a couple different versions of firmware that need to be upgraded. So it may be anywhere from five to 20 minutes before the hardware gets online usually. Um, but uh, there's nothing else that needs to be done. You just sit, plug it in, and then wait. And once it's connected to the cloud, you have access to it anywhere you've got access to a web browser or your mobile phone. So when it comes to the Nebula architecture, this is a question we get a lot, especially from Meraki resellers. Um, we do not use like a, what Meraki calls a shard-based system where each, each uh, 
each MSP or each VAR gets their own virtual cloud. Um, rather than doing that and building our own virtual cloud in, in house, we've, uh, we're using uh, Amazon Web Services, AWS. So it should help dramatically as far as throughput and bottlenecks. Um, we have the ability to scale as much as we need to as more and more devices come online. Um, we have a four nines uptime SLA guarantee. I mean, essentially, we should be online as long as AWS is online. We generally have one short interruption, I think, every year. And it makes huge news because of just how rare it is for AWS to go down. So some questions we get are about the security and privacy. So none of your land traffic, none of your user data passes through the cloud. Everything works just like it does today with a, traditionally net, a traditional network. Land traffic stays on the land. Internet traffic just goes out to the internet. The only thing that is going out to the cloud is the management. So the Nebula devices dial out to the cloud. That's where they go to check for configuration changes. That's where they go to update um, you know, with their status information. That's the only stuff that's going out to the cloud. And one thing I'll just hit on here um, that makes us a little bit different than Meraki and some of the other solutions is the Nebula Cloud is available for free. Um, the, the base version of it is free. It supports an unlimited number of devices. We do sell something called ProPack, um, which gets you access to some advanced features. But if that ever lapses or you decide not to renew it, yeah, you don't lose access to your hardware. It simply rolls back to the free version, which offers full device configuration, you know, and stuff. And we'll, we'll get more into what's the difference between the free version and the pro version a little bit later on. Um, so this is the Nebula solution here. It's made up of a couple different uh, components. Um, Nebula Control Center is the cloud portion of it. So um, that's what's handling this for you. Um, one change that was made just recently is if you go to nebula.zicel.com, you will see two options. Nebula Control Center, which is the core of our uh, cloud-based uh, networking platform. You will also see Nebula Coordinator. So Nebula Coordinator is um, a different solution that's used as part of our SD-WAN solution not be talking about today. So when you see that, when you log into nebula.zyso.com, that, that's why you're seeing two things there. So um, for cl cloud managed networking, Nebula Control Center is our cloud portion. Then we've got a line of dedicated hardware on the security gateway switches and access points that are built from the ground up for Nebula. We've also been rolling out what are called Nebula Flex products. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about those. And the mobile app. So here's what you see when you log into Nebula Control Center. Um, the first thing you're going to get here is you're going to get a list of all of your customers. So we break that down and we call those orgs or organizations. So each one of your customers you will set up as their own organization. And you will be able to quickly and easily see them all, see whether they are using the free version of Nebula, whether they're using the Pro Pack, whether their security licenses have expired. And you'll see a quick view of how many sites each of those customers have and the status of their equipment, how many devices are online, offline, et cetera, at a quick glance. From there, you choose your customer you want to manage, and you'll get taken to this dashboard view here. So if you've got multiple sites, you can view those sites on a map as well as just a quick snapshot of what's going on in each of those sites as far as your networking devices. And then you choose the site and you come to the site dashboard, which gives you a real quick breakdown there of, you know, how many access points are assigned to them, how many are online, same with your switches, same with your gateway, what your PoE usage is versus your PoE budget on your switches, how many clients are online, which devices are using the most bandwidth. And if we're using our security gateway, we'll actually break down bandwidth utilization by individual web-based application. And then from there, you just dial down to access points, switches, gateways to, to do further configuration or to dig deeper into the status and the log information available on those. And then we've got that drop-down menu on the top. You can use that to quickly jump between sites or quickly jump between your customers. So some of the other stuff we do here, we have Google Maps integration. 
So you can drag and drop individual pieces of hardware onto Google Maps, or alternately, you can uh, scan in and upload a floor plan, and then again, individually drag and drop the hardware onto that floor plan where you've installed it. So that way, you know, in six months or two years or whenever you have to go on site or you've got a new guy that needs to go on site, you can get a good idea of where stuff is physically located at the customer premise. With a pro pack, you get an automatic topology view. So we automatically create a topology to make it easy for you to see, you know, which switches are plugged into which other switches, which are plugged into which access points, et cetera, et cetera. Again, making it just really easy to troubleshoot the network and be able to, you know, scale up from the end user device and see which path that data is taken. For more updates, so we've got the ability here to uh, automatically push out updates at a certain time that is fully configurable for you as to when you want those updates to take place or whether you prefer to uh, hold off and pushing out the uh, firmware updates until you've maybe tested them on your own internal uh, site. And we have the ability to set these rules based on the class of products. So you can set up different schedules or different policies for your access points, your switches, and your gateways. We have role-based administration. So we have the ability to create a different admin accounts the free version of Nebula can have five admin accounts per organization. ProPack has an unlimited number of admin accounts. So it gives you really granular access as to what people have access to, whether they can log in and see status of stuff, whether they have the ability to see the settings but not change them, whether they can change those settings. And you do that based not just on a, you know, a Nebula-wide basis, but you can set those based on the customer and based on individual sites. You can control, you know, this guy has just access to, you know, the site he works at. He can't go in and change anything at other sites. We've also got the ability to set up different types of uh, admin accounts, such as the ability to be able to generate um, guest usernames and passwords and maintain those, but not change anything else. So you can give that to your receptionist um, so she can help manage guests visiting your company. We have misconfiguration protection. So basically when you go through and you make a bunch of changes, we look at those changes and intelligently apply them in the correct order to make sure nothing goes offline. I'm sure it's about everybody out there that's messed with VLANs has you know, changed their VLANs in the wrong order and suddenly found they can no longer reach certain pieces of hardware. Um, so that, that prevents that type of stuff. Um, we have the ability to set out with a pro pack, automatic alerts anytime any sort of configuration change is made. Um, so you as an owner can maybe keep track of what your techs are doing and when they're making those changes. We also log all of that change information. So you can go back through and see who made that change and when. So that can be really helpful when you're trying to troubleshoot weird behavior on the network, find out you know when something was changed, find out who made that change so you can find out why they did it. Um, when it comes to offering guest networks, we have a huge ton of flexibility in how we do guest access. Um, one of the coolest things we do is you don't necessarily need VLANs to do your guest access. We can isolate your guest network using layer two uh, isolation, where the access point can enforce where those users on that guest SSID, what they can have access to. And you can specifically restrict them just to internet access or just to specific resources on the LAN, such as a web-based printer or a storage device. Um, you can do that real easy. We have the ability to let people on and have them agree to a terms of service page, to log in with the username and password, to generate their own username and password and register with an email address before getting access, to use Facebook authentication, so tons of flexibility when it comes to doing your guest networks. Um, and if you're deciding to host that page, um, we have a built-in sort of uh, what you see is what you get editor for customizing that page. If that doesn't get you enough customization, you can download HTML and CSS files, edit those, and re-upload those. And if that still doesn't give you the flexibility you want, you can always host on a website you host yourself and use that to be your uh, guest network. And then we've got the, the Nebula mobile app. It's primarily designed to give for installers to make it easy for them to add devices, to get an idea of what's going on in your sites. And we do have some configuration of say like a wireless network. Uh, but what we found is a mobile device 
just isn't the right platform for doing more complex configuration. So for more complex stuff, we do require you go to the website rather than use the app. Excuse me. Um, so some of the cool stuff, the app has the ability, like we talked about before, to scan the QR codes on the device and assign them to your customer. Um, makes that easy for you to do there. It also gives you the ability for your installer to photograph the device that they've installed, and that's then stored in the cloud. So again, if you're going on site a long time down the road, or you've got a new guy who hasn't been out there before, you can quickly see where the individual piece of hardware was installed in to help track it down if you need a service or check that hardware on site. Um, and then we've got a number of technologies we've built in here to, to help optimize the user experience. We've already talked before about the flexibility on the guest networks. Um, we have dynamic channel selection where we in the cloud, you know, help automatically choose the channels individual access points use. We've got a couple different methods of doing load balancing and doing smart client steering um, to make sure people are connected to the proper access point to make sure they're roaming when they should roam, et cetera, et cetera, just to help smooth things through and make it a seamless process. The other question we get a lot is, you know, hey, I've already got SolarWinds or some other platform that uses SNMP to keep track of my customer networks. Um, you can still use that. Nebula hardware still works with SNMP, still has syslog output. So if you've already got a platform that you're using to do that monitoring and alerting, you can keep on using that. You don't need to replace it. So again, I just want to reiterate how simple things are. Setup process with Nebula is a very simple process. Basically, you need to plug in the hardware so it's got power, DHCP, and an internet connection. Um, you need to log into the Nebula Control Center and register those devices and assign them to a customer. And then you configure your network. So those are the three steps. And those steps can be done pretty much in any of the, any order you want. So, you know, before you even order the hardware, you can go in, create the customer, create the sites, and start laying out the configuration that you'll want the switches and access points to use um, before you figure out exactly which hardware you're using or exactly how many APs you need to do all of that. So you can rearrange these in any way you want. So one of the big changes we made to Nebula last year um, was the uh, um, adding of Nebula Flex. Oh, it looks like I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself here, so hold on. Um, so one thing that goes with all of our hardware um, is we have designed it to last, and we have designed it using what we call an RF-first mentality. So all of our Nebula hardware comes with a lifetime hardware warranty. And so some of the things we've done different here, and if you've got, you know, a Ruckus AP or a Ubiquiti AP, you can open them up and take a look. Or if you've got one of our APs and one of theirs, just hold one in each hand and you will feel the difference. So some of the stuff that we have done to help prolong the life of the hardware, number one cause of failure on solid state hardware like this is capacitors failing. They pop, they, they get, generate leaks, they boil over. So we do not use any... Um, liquid-based capacitors. Any capacitors we are using are solid-state capacitors. They last forever. The other major cause of failure on a solid-state device like this is heat fatigue. Just the, the heat buildup itself on the boards can cause individual components to fail, and oftentimes the most common cause of failure is cracks in the solder joints. So one of the things we've done there is we've put a giant heat sink on the back of the PCBA to pull that heat off the board to keep the board from heating up. And then we've got a ton of venting in the back to make sure that heat vents out of the hardware. The other thing you see on the other side of the board there is you see a lot more shielding than you would traditionally see uh, when you look at our competitors' products. So we shield not only the specific RF components, but some of the other components on the board to reduce EMI. We also do not mount our antennas onto the board. We mount them instead onto a separate shield, again, to provide that extra level of separation. So when you add that all together, you get a, it's a two or three dBi gain, which doesn't sound a lot, but that's, that's a pretty significant difference 
when you're talking about the signal to noise ratio and it's the difference between having a flaky connection and a slow but reliable connection. And you see similar designs and similar stuff, particularly dealing with heat, when you look at our switches and our security gateways. Okay, so now back to Nebula Flex. So this is something that we rolled out um, last year on our access points at the beginning of the year. We rolled it out more to our switches um, in, I think, Q3, beginning of Q4. And we just put out the press release today for something new called Nebula Flex Pro. So Nebula Flex... So traditionally, our Nebula solutions, like Meraki solutions, you had to buy the Nebula-specific hardware to use it in the, ne uh, the Nebula management platform. So Nebula Flex was a firmware update we rolled out to our existing non-cloud-based hardware that allows you to switch them to a cloud-based mode. So instead of having to buy the Nebula access points, you can also buy our NWA 1123 access points they work just as they've always worked, or you can assign them and switch them over and manage them through Nebula. So right now, Nebula Flex products are our NWA 1123 series. So that's the V2, the Pro, and the HD. It's our hospitality designed wireless access point, the NWA 1302 AC. And we just rolled out the Nebula Flex Pro, which is our NWA5123 ACHD and our WAC6303D-S. So what makes Nebula Flex Pro different than Nebula Flex? Um, the big differentiator is just the traditional differentiation between these two series. The 1100 series traditionally works as standalone. So now it can work as standalone or as cloud managed. The 5000 series and higher traditionally work standalone or with a controller. So now you can use them standalone with a controller or using the Nebula Cloud. So the main difference between the 1100 and the 5000 and higher is the 5000 and higher can also be used with a controller, hardware based controller, or with one of our USG or UAG products um, acting as the controller. The other difference that we've done is the pros include three years of Nebula Pro Pack out of the box, whereas the 1100 series and the 1302, they just use the free version out of the box. And if you want to use Pro Pack, you have to buy the Pro Pack license. The Nebula Flex Pro includes three years of the Pro Pack license out of the box. And then we still offer the dedicated Nebula access points. Um, which come with three years of the Pro Pack out of the box. So we'll talk a little bit about switching. So traditionally, we've only had the NSW series, which was our dedicated, uh, you know, cloud-based uh, switches, and those are still around. Those are available in 10-port PoE and non-PoE versions and 24-port PoE, non-PoE, and 10-gig uplink. But we also launched at the end of Q3, beginning of Q4, somewhere in there, uh, we launched our GS1920 V2 series and XGS1930 Nebula Flex series. So these work just as the a traditional switch has always worked, but they give you the ability to manage them with Nebula Flex. And again, out of the box, they don't come with any of the Pro Pack. They just come with the free version of Nebula. So just showing here when we're looking at um, what the Nebula offers, if you're using them and managing them with a switch, in addition to that single pane of glass and the easy remote access, easy monitoring, um, it's designed for efficient network provisioning. We've scaled down and optimized the GUI interface. We've made it really easy to configure multiple ports across multiple switches at the same time. We give you access to real-time monitoring. They have really great control over port settings and PoE settings. So this is just going to show here, just, you know, here's, here's uh, your ports spread across multiple switches. You can see the port number, where the LLDP is on, how many bytes have been going through them. We've got the check boxes over there on the left. You can go ahead and check those. Select the ones you want to configure. And it pops up a single pop-up there where you've got access to the settings that will be applied across all of those ports that you've selected, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, RSTP, 
whether it's ports enabled or disabled, whether it's using radius, whether you're using a PoE schedule, et cetera, et cetera, VLAN tags. So we'll move on from there and we'll hit on security devices. Um, so right now we've got four different models of security appliance available. Basically, they're all offering the same feature set. The difference is going to be the physical configuration, how many ports are available, um, and in general, just the throughput, how much throughput can be run through them um, before you cap them out. So you can see the NSG50 um, has a max firewall throughput of 300 megs. If you turn on the UTM functionality, it limits you to 50 megs. So if your customer's got a 100 meg connection and you want the UTM, that's probably too slow for you. You probably want to go up to the NSG 100 or 200 instead. So unlike the switches and the access points, our other lines of security firewall appliances, the USG series, the Zywalls, the ATP products, those are not currently offered as a Nebula Flex. So you've got to decide, do you want Nebula to manage the security gateway or would you rather have a more full featured security gateway that you, you have to manage the traditional way? Um, doesn't matter, you know, the rest of the network can still be Nebula based. You just won't manage your gateway if you choose not to use one of their NSG gateways. Um, some of the selling points here on the NSG security gateway or is it, it makes it really, really easy to configure site to site um, VPNs um, as long as they're all using the NSG. It's really simple. You know, your customers saying, okay, these sites talk to these sites um, and away you go. Um, it makes it really easy here to do set up some of your layer three firewall rules. Um, one of the cool things we do offer with the NSG is this application control. So you can create your firewall rules just using the application. You don't need to know IP addresses or ports or which protocols they're using. So you can see here, you go to add your profile. And then we've just got a, a pull down list with things grouped by categories. So you can say, hey, I want to block Facebook or no, I want to allow them Facebook, but I don't want them to be able to upload stuff to Facebook or I want them to use Facebook Messenger, but I don't want them to be able to do video chat. So it makes it really easy to set up rules like this to give you really good granular control of what's going on on your network. Um, so originally when the NSGs came out, the only offered um, IDP. So starting in, I think it was June of last year, um, all the NSGs got a free upgrade. So we now offer content filtering, antivirus, this application control we were just talking about. So you do offer most of the UTM type functionality is available on the NSG. Another question we get a lot is, oh, it's cloud-based. How does that work for privacy laws and things like that? So Zycel is a multinational company. Um, the Nebula solution is offered in pretty much all of our markets, including Europe. So we comply with all of the different security and government regulations and privacy regulations that are out there. Whether we're talking HIPAA or PCI, um, all the myriad of other ones that are available in different countries, we do comply with all of those. So there should be no worry there as far as security or privacy goes. So I want to talk a little bit here about now the licenses that are available for Nebula. So Nebula is available as a free version. And then we also offer our professional pack that can be purchased, purchased as annual licenses, as you would traditionally do with like a Meraki or something like that or an Arrowhive. Um, but we also offer lifetime or perpetual licensing. So if you know your customer site wants, profession, wants a professional pack and you don't want to deal with renewals every year, there's a one-time purchase license you buy and then you've got pro pack for, forever essentially. It is not locked to the individual hardware is locked to the customer organization. So you can swap out hardware and you don't need to buy new licenses going forward. So we'll talk here a little bit about what you get with Nebula free. So the free version of Nebula gets you that zero, zero touch auto deployment where you simply need to plug in the hardware, get an internet access and it will automatically connect to the cloud update its firmware and download the configuration you've assigned to that customer in that site. 
There is no limit on the number of devices that you can have on Nebula Free. There is not a limit on the number of customer sites you can have set up under the Nebula Free. Um, you get, you know, the built-in captain portal and guest functionality. Um, you get five admin accounts. You get access to SMMP and syslog and two-factor authentication. You, you get all the same access to our tech support. Um, as far as emailing us or phoning us in, phoning in to call to talk to local support. So now we say, well, that sounds pretty good. Why would I want to upgrade to the professional pack? So you may not. Uh, we do have customers out there that don't need the professional pack features. The, the free version is enough for them, and that's great. So, but what does the professional pack offer? So we increase the amount of logs. So instead of keeping a week's worth of information, we store a year's worth of rolling log and client monitoring information. So if you have an issue, you're troubleshooting, you can go back a full year and look through those logs to see when it started, and maybe see what changed. Um, we have a number of automatic email alerts and reports that are only available through the ProPack. So for instance, one of the things we can do is we can generate a weekly or monthly report add your logo to it and automatically email that out to your customer so that they can see you're being proactive and keeping an eye on the health of their network. Um, so that's something that the ProPack requires. We have a cloud-based authentication database. The free version of Nebula, that, that cloud database is limited to 100 entries, whether you're using it for usernames and passwords for authentication, whether you're using it for Mac filtering. ProPack has an unlimited number of entries into that database unlimited number of admin accounts, gets you access to that visual topology tool where we automatically generate your network topology for you. Um, we're gonna be rolling out Wi-Fi analytics integration via uh, social media, so that'll be something that requires a professional pack. The ability to clone sites and set up a tiered sort of master-slave relationship when it comes to configuring uh, stuff between a master org and, and uh, other, excuse me, a master site, the additional sites, that's something that's limited just to the pro pack. So if you're more of an MSP, you've got a lot of customers, you've got a lot of techs, um, it makes a lot of sense to go with a pro pack. Um, the other thing the pro pack gets you is the ability to generate support tickets directly from the Nebula cloud interface rather than calling in. And the benefit of that um, is those tickets go directly to our R&D and CSO support team at our headquarters in Taiwan. Um, so if, if you want to directly deal with R&D, that's the easiest way to do it versus calling in and dealing with somebody uh, here locally. Trade-off, of course, is, is they work in Taiwan, so they're on a different time zone than we are here. So if you need something done quickly or you think it's something done easily, just call in. If it's something uh, bigger deal, you might want to want that pro pack feature being able to open a ticket directly with our headquarters. The other add-on we offer is we sell a security pack. All of our NSG gateways come with one year of all the UTM licenses. So after that, you'll need to buy a security pack license to renew that. So that gets you that app patrol, the ability to categorize traffic based on applications and create those firewall rules based on application, IDP, antivirus, and content control. Um, so this is showing how you can combine those together. So let's talk about bundled licenses. Um, the NAP series of access points and the Nebula Flux Pro access points come with three years of the Pro Pack out of the box. So as soon as those are assigned to that first organization, those, those licenses will be applied. There's no extra hardware that needs to be done or no extra license keys that need to be manually entered. The NSW switches and the NSG switches include one year of pro pack out of the box. And then the Nebula Flex switches and access points don't include any of the pro pack. And this is important now we're going to talk about co-termination. So one thing we do, which some of our competition doesn't offer and some of them does, but you have to manually request it, is we automatically co-term all of the licenses. So in some of the other solutions that are out there, let's say today you buy 10 access points, and then down the road you buy another set of access points. Six months down the road, the problem you run into is 10 of your access points expire in six months, 
another 20 of your access points expire in 12 months. So you're, you're trying to manage and maintain different expiration dates for different hardware based on when it was added, based on when it was upgraded, and then you're doing that for all of your customers. So what we do is called uh, co-termination. Basically, we can convert these annual licenses or three-year three licenses into a points-based system and pool all of those points together. So as you add different pieces of hardware, it gets converted into points, thrown into a pool, so everything expires at the same time. So the benefit of that for you is it dramatically simplifies how easy it is for you to understand when that customer is going to expire. And we've got a tool in the Nebula interface here where you can log in, quickly see what's going on, when everything's going to expire. And you can go in there and use the calculator and you can choose a date and say, hey, you know what, I want all my customers to expire at the end of Q3. Or I want this customer to expire at the beginning of the year. So you can set that date and it'll tell you how many points you need to buy based on which hardware has already been deployed to make sure everything expires on that date for you. So the whole idea here is just to, to simplify the management of those licenses when they expire. So each customer is going to have one date when everything expires regardless of what, which hardware they bought, regardless of whether it's, you know, they mixed and match, they've got some Nebula Flex stuff, they've got some Nebula st stuff that came with Nebula Pro, doesn't matter, all gets thrown into a pot, all get the Nebula Pro features, and all expire at the same time. So I hope that makes sense, but it, once you start using it, it, it's so much easier than trying to manage multiple expiration dates. So all of your Pro Pack licenses expire at the same time, all of your NSG licenses expire at the same time, and this is all based on the customer. So each customer has its own uh, unique thing. So if you have you know, 100 different customers, each one of those is managed separately. They're not all being thrown into a pool together. So we'll talk briefly here about some of the differences between us and some of the other cloud solutions out there. Obviously, the 800-pound you know, gorilla in this space is Cisco Meraki. Arrowhive is one of the one of the first to uh, really dive into it when it comes to access points. We're looking at Ubiquity, specifically the Unify Elite solution. Um, if you, you've dealt with Ubiquity, you know they've got a whole bunch of different ways of doing cloud. You can, you know, they give you that free cloud controller or the free controller software, which can be hosted locally. You can host it in your own data center. You can pay them to host it in their cloud. They've got the, you know, the the unified keys that you got to plug in. So there's a bunch of different solutions that Ubiquity offers. For this comparison, we're just looking at their Unify Elite solution. We've also got uh, Aruba and Ruckus solution in there. So one of the first takeaways there is we're one of the only ones that offers a single cloud interface for access points, switches, and gateways. Um, one of the things that sets us apart from the Unify Elite is plug and play. With Unify, you have to go in and manually point those devices towards the cloud. Only us and Cisco Meraki offer the license co-termination. So with any of the others, you have individual pieces of hardware expiring at different times based on when you install them. Only we offer a perpetual or lifetime license. Um, and when we look here at expired behavior, what happens when the paid license expires? With Meraki, you get shut out. You're unable to manage your devices anymore. With us, it just rolls back to the free version where a big chunk of all, all the core functionality is manageable through the free interface. Some of our, our, our competitors there are the same thing. You end up getting locked out or lose significant access to your devices if you don't renew those annual licenses. Um, some of the other stuff here, you know, that ability to give you a year's log of every change that was made and who made those configuration changes. It's just us in Meraki offering that. Um, you know, cloud authentication is another great one there. The IDP and application patrol, that's us there. Um, you know, it's just us and Meraki. So when you look at the solutions, we compete very well against most of our competition. We offer the bulk of the features that Cisco Meraki offers, and we do it at a price point that just is absolutely ridiculous compared to what Meraki charges for most of the same functionality. Um, for reference here, the Pro Pack. Obviously, Cisco Meraki doesn't offer a free version. We've got that free solution, our Pro Pack, one access point. It's around $30 a year. 
one switch is around $35 a year. For most of our hardware, it's actually a cheaper annual license than even the ubiquity solution. So if you look at a three or five year total cost of ownership, we come out ahead of, of ubiquity, even if ubiquity's hardware costs a little bit less up front. So most of you are probably partners, um, but if you, you got to us through Spiceworks or social media, you might not be a partner. So if you are a VAR, if you are an MSP, you should be part of our partner program. It's a free program we offer. Um, it just takes a few minutes to sign up through our website. It gives you access to stuff like deal registration, gives you priority access to our tech support, gives you access to some other resources that we have available. Probably the biggest thing though, is it gives you access to discounts that are automatically applied through distribution. So when you go through distribution, you say, hey, I'm a partner, you automatically get discounts with no additional paperwork that needs to be done on your end when you're purchasing. Um, so really easy to do. I, I highly recommend you sign up for it. We also have a partnership with Leaf Financial. So if you're looking at doing more of an MSP type solution where you don't charge the customers up front for hardware, Leaf offers solutions for financing to make that easier to help stretch that out. Um, so no down payments required. Um, Leaf also gives you options there if you want to do leasing on the hardware. You can do the leasing through your own name, but offload that to Leaf and let Leaf take care of managing those lease payments and dealing with the hardware at the end of the lease or if the customer stops paying. So that's something else we offer. So if you want to join up, if you're not a partner already, just go to zycel.com, click on Partners, click on Channel Partner Program, and then midway down the page, which is poor user interface, I'm fully aware, click on Become a Partner, and that'll take you to the application to fill out. It's pretty straightforward. The one thing you need to know probably before you fill it out is know your distribution partner accounts. So whether you're going through Ingram or DNH or Cynix or Wave, be sure to include those when you fill out the application because that's how we do the automatic discounts that you get by being a partner. So if you like the idea of Nebula and you haven't played with it yet and you think it sounds interesting or has potential for you, um, we have a live demo that's available to anybody. You just go to nebula.zysel.com, click on Nebula Cloud or Nebula Control Center, and then just log in using the credentials on the page for the live demo. Um, if you would like to get your hands on a demo kit and you haven't already taken advantage of some free hardware from us or your new partner, um, we will send you out a 60-day demo kit, which includes an access point, a switch, and a gateway. So you can test it out in your offices or stick it in a test environment with one of your customer sites and give it a try. We really think if you play with it and use it, you will learn to love it. It is, it is a fantastic concept dramatically simplifies a lot of things if you're still doing things the traditional network management route. Um, so that is it as far as the presentation goes. Um, again, my name is Sean Rogers. Email me, seanr at zycel.com if you have any feedback on this presentation, things you liked, things you didn't like. I, I definitely want to know where we're dropping the ball in these presentations. We want these to be valuable for you, so give me those uh, that feedback via email, or you can pass it on through your uh, your uh, sales salesperson here and it's assigned to you at Zyso. Uh, but otherwise, use the Q&A box, send in questions via the Q&A box, and I will start answering those. Can be about anything. Um, so let's see, we've got the first question here. It's a long one. I'm not going to read the whole thing. Let me see if I can summarize it here. So one person is asking about the ability to configure a uh, configure a fixed WAN IP on devices on the Nebula platform after you've scanned them in. So that, that is one trick here. You know, Nebula devices need an internet connection and most networks are using some form of DHCP, at least on the, everything but your gateway. Um, so for those items, it should just be drop and play. But if you do need to use a static IP or static gateway settings for that internet connection, you unfortunately will have to configure them locally on each individual piece of hardware. Um, just because if they don't have internet access, they can't reach out to the cloud and get that. Um, 
so you you know if, if you, you have to manually configure it you have to manually configure it but i my experience is most people out there all the the land stuff is being done on dhcp if you're using fixed ip addresses you're probably doing it through a uh, fixed assignment in the dhcp where you match the mac address with with a specific um, ip address so that you're always pulling the same ip address i, I hope that that answered your question um, if not, type in another question here or follow up on it and I'll try to. So are there any differences in the access points with Nebula and NWA? Um, do you have a PDF of all hardware that is currently Nebula compatible? Um, we're working right now on updating our product portfolio. So that's a single document you download that shows all of our hardware and it will have stuff grouped by whether it supports Nebula or not. So that, that should be getting published soon. Um, the first draft of it was just sent out to us to review just yesterday. So that should be coming out probably in the next few weeks. Um, otherwise, you can just go to our website. I think you can just Google Zycel Nebula and Zycel Nebula Flex. It should take you to two different landing pages, one for Nebula and one for the Nebula Flex solution. And I think all the hardware is listed there. Um, in addition, if you're a partner, reach out to your salesperson. We can email you something too that just lists everything. Um, I don't know if we've got it on the partner portal yet, but for sure your salesperson can put you in touch with that. So back to the question, what's the differences between the NAPS and the NWA series access points? Hardware wise, nothing. It, it, it's just originally it was, uh, we were gonna have this, we were gonna follow the Meraki model and just say, if you want cloud management, you have to buy the cloud hardware. Uh, but going forward, our idea is to eventually marry all of our hardware with the Nebula cloud. So at some point, the dedicated NAP series will go away and it, it'll just be the NWA series. So the, that's why we sort of got that mismatch, the mismatch there. You know, so at the moment, Nebula Flex includes just the free version of Nebula. Nebula Flex Pro includes the three years of Nebula Pro pack out of the box, and the NAP series of access points includes the uh, three years out of the box. Um, you know, hopefully, hopefully here at some point here we'll we'll just simplify this down to one series of hardware. But for at the moment, we've still got that differentiation between standalone controller managed and Nebula Cloud. So again, just, just to hit everybody, NWA 1100 series and 1300 series are Nebula Flex. The 5123 ACHD and the WAC 6303, so essentially our Wave 2 controller managed access points, those are now Nebula Flex Pro. All of the GS1920 V2 series switches are Nebula Flex. All of the XGS1930 series switches are Nebula Flex. And then we've got the dedicated NSW series, uh, Nebula switches and the NSG security gateways. All right, moving on to the next questions. Are the slides available to us as a partner? Yeah, this, this is getting recorded and should be uh, part of the partner portal. So when you log into that partner portal, if you've already signed up as a partner, this should be there. If you're not seeing it, I know sometimes we can lag on getting stuff posted up there. Um, you can just reach out to your salesperson and we can uh, make that file available to you. Uh, we can probably also make a version of this presentation available for you in a PDF format. Um, so you can show your partners, obviously they don't need to see the uh, partner program sign-in information and stuff like that. Um, Jack was also asking about the difference between the NAP and NWA. I think I've already answered that for everybody. So we'll go ahead and skip that. Can I put my contact information in a slider in the chat? Yeah, normally I have it as a slide and for some reason I left it off this one accidentally. I don't know. Yeah, let me real quick do that for everyone. Sorry, it'll take me just a second. So again, I am Sean Rogers. My official title is Market Development Manager. Um, for the rest of you, I'm, just, I'm, I'm a product manager. There we go, I'll put my email on there. And then, there we go, should now be on the screen for you. 
So any feedback on the presentation or any reason you want to reach out to me, go ahead and email me directly or just work through your salesperson. Any plans to support more than two WAN interfaces? Yes, but I can't say more than that. Um, we, like I said, we are, we are looking to expand Nebula eventually to everything. So basically our entire firewall lineup of USGs, UAGs, AD, ATPs, at some point those will all become neb manageable through Nebula and the functionality will all be there. Um, unfortunately, I, I can't share with you any sort of roadmap or timeline for any specific rollouts on that, but that, that is where we're slowly and eventually getting to. Um, so Jack was asking about more information on LEAF. Reach out to your salesperson. Um, so that should be either Jacob, Ivan, or Sandra. Um, those are who should, those are, one of those three should be assigned to you as your salesperson. So you can reach out to them and they can provide you more information on LEAF, how to work with them, do a conference call with you and LEAF, whatever needs to be done. Your salesperson should be able to handle that. If you don't know who your salesperson is, just uh, call into the main number um, and ask to speak to someone in channel sales and they'll, they'll put you in touch with someone and we'll figure it all out from there. Uh, Derek, thank you for the feedback. Appreciate it. Um, so Jack is also was asking about um, faster firewall throughput. So again, yeah, it's, it's all something that's being worked on as we're slowly expanding the security line. Um, I think we were, honestly, I think we were sort of caught off guard by the demand for security gateways. Um, let, me, let me pull up the slide real quick. So there we go, just put on the slide there for you. I mean, that's, that's currently our highest end NSG gateway. So, you know, with UTM, with full UTM functionality enabled, you know, throughputs at max at 450 megabits per second. And I, I believe that's, you know, ideal lab scenario type stuff. I think you're probably looking at probably a 25 or 30% hit below that. Um, once you start talking, you know, real world mix, mixed traffic. So I, I we, we are aware of that. Um, and, and like I said, we're, we're looking to expand these. Um, I just, I can't at this time, we haven't announced anything, so I can't share anything as far as roadmap or um, expanding the functionality goes. But honestly, we, when what we've seen by looking at other people that have deployed cloud managed networks and things like that, is people really like the cloud management for their access points and their switches. And very often you would have a third party firewall gateway product. Uh, and so we just assume most people wouldn't be that interested in the cloud managed security gateways because we hadn't really seen that take off with anybody else. So we were, we were kind of surprised at just how much interest there has been um, in doing the security gateway through Nebula instead of managing it um, the traditional way or using, you know, you know, the customer gets a free, you know, Cisco firewall that comes from the ISP when they buy the service and that's just what they can use type of situation. So yeah, we are, we are playing catch up there on that. Absolutely. Put my contact info back up there. Okay, someone's asking about the benefits of deal registration. Um, so basically, as you're working on projects, and I'm sure you've encountered this, you know, the customer says, here's my bid, I want a network, you know, they, they send it out to a bunch of different people um, and say, give me your best price. So then with deal registration is whoever brings that deal to us first can register that deal and we will it be the only partner of record that we will work with on special pricing for that customer. So the, the idea there is you will get some additional discount above and beyond the normal partner discount for that project. And if it's a project that's being farmed out there, you don't have to worry about your competition getting better pricing than you. If you were the first one to register that deal, you get the best pricing period end of story. So that, that's the benefit of deal rich. Okay, that is it for questions that have been in there. Again, thank you everyone for turning up. If you still have some questions, I'll hang out. You can send them in. I'm going to go ahead though and stop recording. Um, but I'll keep this open for a few minutes in case someone's typing in a question or has a follow-up.